Welcome to another episode. In this video, we are going to look at network address translation, also called NAT. The primary solution for the NAT technology was to brought about a temporal solution to the strategies of IPv4 addresses or IPv4 public addresses. As we know, the, the more host or devices were connected on the internet, so these IPv4 addresses were no more enough for all connectivity to the internet. So NAT came as a temporal solution to these strategies of IPv4 addresses, whereby multiple um, private addresses or RFC 1918 addresses in a local network could see uh, one public address and get connected to the internet. So as we know that IPv6 has came almost 15 years now, which is more of a permanent solution to these strategies of addresses Still now, we can use NAT for some security reasons. At NAT can hide multiple real addresses behind a single public IP address or a single routable address over the internet cloud. So in this topology, we have a land here, and this we are going to make sure that clients connected on this network are going to be NATed via the gateway router and get into the ISP router towards the internet. So that means here we are going to apply our NAT configuration on the gateway router. This is the gateway router to our LAN, whereby anybody who is coming from this LAN 10, 100, 100, about any other address will be NATed towards uh, the gateway router via its relatively public addresses 202.60.10.2 um, slash 30. So here we have the ISP router connecting to um, two upstream providers to the internet so that means one link is going via g1 slash 0 and the other link is going via g3 slash 0 so here we're simulating the google dns server 8.8.8 .8 and another dns server on the public internet for one university in us which is 4.2.2.2 right so here we have done basic routing configurations to ensure that there is reachability from the gateway router here in our LAN network towards the ISP and finally to the internet. Okay, we have also configured IP addressing to this PC. PC1 is giving the IP address 10.100.100.1 slash 24. So you can verify that issuing that command. So IP and here the address is displayed 10.100.1 slash 24. Likewise, PC2 also is assigned the IP address 10.100.100.2 so, 24. so let's test connectivity from um, the gateway router. I will try to hit uh, the Google DNS server to see that or to verify there is reachability from our gateway router towards the internet. So here I will ping the IP address of the Google DNS server 8.8.8.8 and here we have seen a reply of 100% success rate. Okay, so we can also ping the IP address of the public DNS server for the 2.2.2 and also we could have a 100% success rate reply over there. So um, let's test connectivity from PC1 to the internet. So right now PC1 is using a private address or RFC 1918 address which is not routable to the internet. So in another word, ISPs will filter out these private addresses getting to their router towards the internet. So if we want our PCs to have access to the internet, they need to be using a public address, which in some cases it could be difficult, or the other option is to use NAT to do that for us. So let's start to test connectivity from PC. One to its gateway, we can ping the gateway 10.100.100.100. 254, which is our gateway router interface, and that one is replying. Let's test connectivity to the internet by pinging the Google DNS server there. And there, our ping is timing out, so that means it's showing that the ping was unsuccessful. All right, so let's begin configurations on the gateway router. We are going to do not using a port addresses, so that means all of this address in the subnet can see a one single IP address and their different session from different computers coming to across the gateway router will be separated using port numbers. In the gateway router, I will jump right in there. 
I will first of all um, configure the interfaces that are going to participate in math. So here, the interface f0 slash 0 is the interface facing our local network, the, the inside interface. So we're going to say that interface is going to do not inside. So that means you go to the interface, interface f0 slash 0, ip not inside. So that tells the interface that you are doing not from the inside network. So the interface is 2 slash 0 is the interface that will be doing our not outside. So we also configure that interface as not outside interface g gigabit 2 slash 0 ip not outside the next thing is we configured an access list so access list this is going to be a standard access list i can choose three permit the lan network that's 10 100 100.0 and the wildcard max there is 0.0.0255 so the access is configured. Next thing we configure the NAS statement IP NAT inside source list inside source list three interface gigabit Ethernet two slash zero and we say overload. Okay, so let's exit that basically. That is the configuration for NAT. First of all, you identify your interfaces. That is um, the NAT inside and outside interfaces on the NAT device router. Create your access list. Okay, here we see access list 3, permit 10, 100, 100, That's the LAN prefix that we want to NAT out. So you can see it's about, it's just last 24. It has 254 others that can see a one single address. And now we apply the NAT statement by indicating the NAT IP not inside source list interface is going to be 2 slash 0 and we said overload there to make sure that um, not it on a port basis. So next let's go back to our PC, PC number 1 and test this connection that was failing before we, we try to reach to um, the internet. We ping a.a.8 and that was time out there so I will recall that command and do the thing again. Here we go, we can see a reply is going through. So that means now that PC one, which is having a real address of 10, 100, 100 .1, is now getting all the way to the internet using a public address that we not here, which is 202.60.10.2 slash 30. So if you go to that router and you can display the NAT translation table so you can see how the mapping was done. So to do that, we display the uh, translation table. So IP NAT translations and here we go you can see it was an ICMP packet that was coming from the inside local address so that means is the IP address from the LAN network 10100.100.1 and that is the IP address in the local network and it was nutted to the inside global address so that is the interface G2 slash 0 on the NAT device when translated to the address that is configured on that interface which is 202.60.10.2 with a port number 1024 remember the port numbers 0 to 1023 are the registered port numbers and those are not meant for nothing so above that port from 1024 all the way to 49151 uh, could be used for the port allocation contain uh, that port numbers will be adjusted so a lot of whole lot of port numbers that we use for different sessions that are coming up okay so you can see that um the pc one which is having a little local address of 10 100 was trying to access the internet okay google dns server a.a.8 and the packet here is saying okay this originated with this real address 10 100 and a dynamical port generated number that was generated by the tcp ip start so the not process not to this inside global address attached to that port number and here it hits the google dns server it say that okay this is the the ip address destinations and destination address and the source port 
So if it's also reply, the router will know that, okay, the reply is coming from a.a.8 .A .8 and it's going to attach the reply port number. Okay, so let's say a PC2 also is trying to get to the internet. We ping and see um, that thing is going through. And then if we go back and see the NAT transaction table, we could see that PC2, which is um, 10100.100.2, also tried to get to the to the same address, which is a.a.8, .A .8, and is translated with the same public address but a different port number 1034 upwards all right that's the end of this video and i will see you in the next episode